This video is on lists. Lists are a universal data type for functional programming, which is why it's very important for us to understand their usage and how they work. Now, a list is a listing of elements in a certain order. Now, of course, those elements do not have to be sorted like they are uh, here, but the first element of a list always has to be the first element, and the second element has to be the second element. So every element has to have a fixed um, index. Now, lists only have one internal type, meaning that you cannot build a list of, for example, integers and floats. This doesn't work. It has to be a list of only integers uh, if we want to build a list like this. Lists can be constructed by so-called constructors. There are two of them. The first one is the empty list, meaning the list with no elements in it. And then the colon or prepend or cons, whatever you want to call it. This colon prepends any element x to an already existing list xs. So let's look at how a list like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, could be constructed with constructors. Well, we basically prepend 1 to the recursive result of whatever is the result of 2, prepended with 3, prepended with 4, prepended with 5, prepended to the empty list is. Let's look at how to generate a list. Well, we could write a function like this, ASC standing for ascending, which creates an ascending list going from n to m. Now, if m is smaller than n, then the whole function doesn't make sense, and we just return an empty list. If m equals n, we return a list with only one element in it, uh, namely m. Now, we could write this as m colon empty list, but we don't have to. In general, we can write a list like this if the amount of elements in it is finite. Okay. And if m is bigger than n, then we recursively construct the new list by prepending n and then uh, doing the recursive call with an incremented n. Of course, uh, our hope is, or the theory is, that n at some point will hit the value of m, at which case we return uh, the last list, a constant list, and then we are finished. Now, because lists are so important, there are many functions already defined on them. Most of them reside in the data.list module, which you can import in GHCI with this statement. If you want to use these functions within your source code, you also have to put this import statement in there. Okay, so let's look not at all of them, but at some of the functions that reside in this module. Now, two very important ones are head and tail. Hat gives you the first element of a list, and tail gives you the tail of a list, meaning uh, the list but without the first element. This is exactly that split that the colon constructor does. Uh, we have an hat which was prepended to that list, and then the rest of that list, which is the tail. Of course, there is a function for determining the length of a list, and then there is init, which uh, gives you a list with the last element removed. Now, when I'm talking about removed, I don't mean that uh, the element gets removed from the list since every data type in Haskell is immutable. It gives you a copy of that list without the last element. Then there is a function determining whether a list is empty or not. Now, this is very important because, for example, head cannot be called on the empty list since, of course, there is no first element to return. So it's very important that if you want to use uh, head or tail that you check if that list is empty. We can also see something else here, that null, head, length, and all of these functions work on polymorphic lists, meaning that this list of a's here means that this a is just a variable type. So this could be anything. This could be um, a list of integers, a list of booleans, a list of strings, a list of lists even. Okay. Now, talking about lists of booleans, for some lists, there are already uh, some functions defined that can be helpful. 
For example, AND and OR, which do the Boolean AND or Boolean OR on uh, any amount of Booleans within a certain list. Why would you use something like that? Well, if you have a lot of uh, conditions to check, you could put them in a list of Booleans and then do an AND or OR on that list. Now, the question might be, how do we cleanly uh, make such a list? And the answer would be list comprehensions. List comprehensions can be used to take one list or multiple lists and build new lists out of them. Like here in the first example, we take the elements from the list 1, 2, 3, and we multiply each one by 2, getting a new list 2, 4, 6. Now, for those list comprehensions, we can have guards, meaning that we can pre-filter the elements we actually want to look at. In the second example, uh, we want to ignore all axes that are smaller or equal to 1. So we actually do that. We ignore the 1 and start with 2 and 3. It's very important that you can do this on multiple lists at once and you can use multiple guards. Let's look at how that works. Well, using multiple lists, you basically go through the first list, you start with the first element, and then you go through the second list. So we start with the first element, 1, and then we go through the second list, A and B. So here we can see how we can create pairs from two lists, for example. Those pairs are called tuples, and I will explain them in a few slides. In general, this uh, way of working with multiple lists works also for three lists, four lists, five lists, however many you want. Okay, now in last video we talked about patterns and pattern matching. Now pattern matching was not really interesting on integers, but on lists they are very interesting. There are two patterns we can look at. We can look at the empty list, for example, or the uh, list with the colon uh, constructor. So let's look at some examples. The sum of an, a list of integers we, for example, could define as, well, the sum of the empty list has to be zero because there are no elements to add together. And otherwise, we have a list with one element in it and then, you know, the rest of that list we call xs. We can, by the way, call them whatever we like, but uh, it is standard to call them x and xs. And in that case, we say that, well, the sum is defined as x plus whatever the rest of that uh, sum of the list is. Also, we can construct a function like this, the evens function, which filters out all non-even numbers. So we say that, well, of course, um, evens of the empty list has to be the empty list. But if we have an element in there, if we have an element x within that list, we check if it can be cleanly divided by 2 with this modular operation. And if it can, if there's no residual, we put it into our new list again. This is very important. We do not take a list and then remove elements from it, but we build a new list and we decide if we put an element in there or not. So we can see here that in the otherwise case, we simply ignore that x and we continue with the recursive call. Okay, so let's talk about tuples. Tuples are a way of having multiple elements uh, in a pair. Now, it's important that those tuples can have only two elements, but they can have more. They can have any finite amount of elements you like. So you could have a three tuple, a four tuple, a five tuple, whatever. So in this case, we have an int int tuple. Now, th those types do not have to be the same. So we could use an int float tuple, we could use a string char tuple, whatever. It is irrelevant. So those tuples can be used uh, also in pattern matching, where, for example, you can build this FST and SND function. Those are already within uh, Haskell, so you don't have to define them yourself. But here we can see how pattern matching works on tuples. This sort of pattern matching can also be done in bindings, like let bindings or where bindings, where you can split tuples you have uh, with such a binding, like saying that, okay, x and y are 1 and 2, so now x is 1 and y is 2. 
So let's put all the knowledge we have together. Let's look at this at tuples function, which gets a list of intuples and provides us with a list of the sums of every single tuple. So we can do that because we need to do something element per element. So we can do that with a list comprehension. The pattern matching of tuples also works in a list comprehension. So we can do it like this and then just, you know, um, compute x plus y since we already have the elements x and y from every single tuple. And if we do that, we have a very neat and clean definition of this add tuples function. Of course, we could have uh, done it a bit more, well, we could have done it uh, differently, where maybe we do pattern matching on the list that we actually get. But if we want to have an algorithm that uh, changes a list or that works on the single elements of a list and then creates a new list, um, more likely than not, you can use list comprehensions for that.